What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about cardio and concurrent training. Can it actually enhance your gains? But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, FTA for the algorithm. This video is about a new study that came out which we covered in reps, which is my monthly research review, which is research explained with practical summaries. You can click the link below to sign up for it, learn more about it, but basically every month we break down five studies in fitness and nutrition that are relevant for our audience. But we do the heavy lifting of breaking down these studies into a way that's palatable for you so that you can understand it, apply it to yourself. We tell you what the results mean, and especially what they don't mean because as we know, a lot of mainstream media will drastically inflate results or sensationalize things. And we tell you whether or not we agree with the author's conclusions, as well as give you some insight into what the one study means in the broader context of the overall literature. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you click the link below and sign up for that. It's only $12.99 a month. And if you got one coffee a week at Starbucks, it would be less than that. I mean, you can't really go wrong with brain gains. And especially if you're a coach, taking your knowledge to the next level, staying on the cutting edge, and when clients ask you about these studies that come out in the media, you wanna be on top of it. So this study was looking at whether or not cardio, or aerobic conditioning, they called it, could enhance your gains. Now, previously, we've kind of gone through like some ups and downs with cardio. And I've gone through some ups and downs in terms of my thoughts on cardio. when. I first started doing bodybuilding, this is back in the early 2000s, the prevailing wisdom was you want to do low intensity cardio because you don't want to spike your cortisol because that's going to impede your gains and you don't want to do high intensity because that's going to be stressful and impede your gains. So I did all low intensity fasted cardio. Then research came out showing some benefits of high intensity intervals in terms of fat oxidation, some molecular signaling and some other things. And so then I switched to high intensity. And also the logic was, well, if you look at sprinters compared to say endurance athletes, sprinters are typically more jacked. Then I switched to doing almost exclusively high intensity cardio for a period of time. Then I kind of went to the camp of, well, there appears to be a negative interference with cardio on strength training and muscle hypertrophy. And so you actually want to do as minimal cardio as possible and just focus on strength training. Then more research came out suggesting that, well, it appears that that's only in the context of a very, very high dose of cardio and specific modalities like jogging, which create a lot of negative eccentrics, uh, muscle damage, which then might in the short term impede your ability to resistance train. But the current consensus in the scientific literature is it does not appear that low or moderate levels of cardiovascular exercise negatively impact muscle hypertrophy and strength gains. Now, keep in mind, those studies have not been done in bodybuilders who are looking to absolutely max out their levels of hypertrophy. So it is possible, and I hold out possibility, that some cardio could have a negative interference effect on resistance training but also balancing that with the fact that in order to get lean enough for say bodybuilding, you're probably gonna have to incorporate some level of cardiovascular exercise, otherwise your calories are gonna get pretty low and uncomfortable. So this study adds kind of a new angle to the literature, which the discussion about cardio had always been, how much does it negatively impact your gains? This study kind of looked at, could it possibly enhance your gains? And the researcher's hypothesis was if you could improve capillarization, so you know the formation of new capillaries, that may be a limiting step in actually achieving muscular hypertrophy. That capillarization is actually something that's important for muscular hypertrophy. What did they do? Well, they took 14 people, which is a low subject number, but keep in mind each person served as their own control because they had them exercise one leg and the other leg stayed at rest. And these sort of studies are actually super useful because by each person serving as their own control, you're actually taking out any genetic variability that might be occurring between subjects. So this is actually a really great study design, these single limb studies, because again, you're absolutely getting rid of that genetic variability by using each subject as their own control. So they had them start on a six week aerobic conditioning program that was three times a week of aerobic conditioning for 45 minutes and they progressively increased the intensity. Two weeks in, they had subjects also start resistance training and they resistance trained for 10 weeks. Then they looked at differences in lean body mass, cross-sectional area, some different satellite cell myonuclei measurements 
as well as capillarization. And what they found was not super remarkable, but they did find a trend or some slight significance for improvements in cross-sectional area and capillarization, as well as possibly some benefits for satellite cell fusion or myonuclei additions for the group that was doing the aerobic conditioning and the resistance training. What does this study actually mean? Does it mean that you need to go out and start doing a bunch of cardio? Not necessarily. Now keep in mind these subjects were healthy and recreationally active, but they had no formal resistance training or cardiovascular training. This is a very new stimulus for them. I'm not sure what this means, for example, for someone like me, who has quite a bit of history of both aerobic conditioning and strength training. In my opinion, it's likely that whatever benefits were to be had from this capillarization have probably already taken place for me. That now just adding a bunch of cardio on top of that, since I already have a base level of aerobic conditioning, is probably unlikely to yield greater gains. If you're somebody who's just getting into strength training, I think maybe also doing that with some cardio might allow you to progress a little bit faster and help make sure you reach your top end a little bit quicker. But again, it's just one study. It's only really 12 weeks. It was a lot of kind of molecular measures. There was some outcome measures, but there was a lot of molecular measures. I really wanna be careful about putting too much emphasis on this one single study. However, I think again, it's important to note that the data seems to trend that at minimum, cardiovascular exercise does not appear to negatively impact hypertrophy and strength training. Now, I think one thing to keep in mind is if you are going to do concurrent training, our best understanding seems to suggest you're probably better off doing your aerobic conditioning on days you do not lift, that separating those is probably a little bit better. And if you are going to do them on the same day, it's probably best to try and separate them during the day. Either do your aerobic conditioning in the morning and your resistance training at night or vice versa. If you have to do them in the same session, if it's relatively low intensity aerobic conditioning and it doesn't negatively impact your lifting, you could probably do it beforehand and treat it kind of like a warm up. But if it's relatively high level of difficulty and it's gonna impede your lifting, you're probably better off doing your lifting first and then your cardiovascular exercise. So again, I think it's always important to take these studies and put them in the appropriate context. I don't think you need to go out and start you know, running for marathons to get gains. <laughs> I think a very modest amount of aerobic conditioning will be enough to reap the benefits of like capillarization and making sure that you have enough of that to maximize your gains. This is a really, unexplored area of research, so I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more studies coming out on this, but for right now, those are my best recommendations. Now, if you wanna see this study broken down in even more detail, make sure you sign up for my research review reps by clicking the link in the description. And if you guys have any questions, you can leave them. And make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys. I hope you have a great week, and I hope you enjoyed this breakdown.